Hello students, this is your economics coach Pratik Bhaseen back with your last chapter of statistics. This is chapter 9 for class 11th. Its name is use of statistical tools. Under this chapter, we will be concluding what all we have studied in the previous chapters. So, we have studied about various statistical tools which are important for us in daily life and they are used in analysis of data pertaining to economic activities such as production, consumption, distribution, banking and insurance, transportation, trade, etc. In this chapter, we will be learning about the methods of developing a project. This will help us in understanding how statistical tools and methods can be used for various types of analysis. So, let us discuss the steps for making a project. The first step of making a project is identifying a problem or an area of study. So, at the outset, you should be clear about what you want to study. First of all, we need to identify what is the need of collecting the data. So, on the basis of our objective, we shall proceed with the collection and processing of the data. For example, we need to collect data about production of a car or sale of a car or banking facilities, etc. Then the second step is choice of target group. So, the choice or identification of the target group is important for framing appropriate questions for your questionnaire because questionnaire is a method of collecting data. So, you must be clear that what questions should be put into it. So, if our project relates to cars, then our target group will be higher income group or middle income group. Then the next step is collection of data. So, under this step, we will be collecting data about the people whom we are going to survey. If we collect the data on our own, it will be called as primary source of data. It can be collected by questionnaires, personal interviews or indirect oral investigation, etc. We can also decide to use universe method or population method or we can decide to take a sample. We can also rely on secondary sources of data. So, these are those sources of which the data has already been collected. So, now let us move ahead to the next step which is organization and presentation of data. So, after collecting the data, we need to process the information that has been collected by organizing and presenting them in the form of tables, graphs, diagrams, etc. Then the next step is analysis and interpretation of data. So, we can use various statistical tools like measures of central tendency like mean, median, mode or measures of dispersion like standard deviation, mean deviation, range and we can also find the correlation coefficient between two variables. Then we can also conclude that whether there exists a relationship among variables or not. So, now let us move ahead to the next step which is the conclusion. The last step will be to draw meaningful conclusions from the data obtained and from the tools applied on it. So, if possible, we must try to predict the future prospects as well and suggestions relating to growth and government policies on the basis of the acquired information. The next step is bibliography. So, in this section, we need to mention the details of all the secondary sources that is from where the data has been obtained. It might be a newspaper, magazine or a government report. Now, let us study a sample project. So, X is a young entrepreneur who wants to set up a factory to produce toothpaste. Now, you are asked to advise X on setting up this factory. That is, what is the data relating to the toothpaste in our country? So, one of the first thing that you could do to help him will be to study people's taste with regard to toothpaste, their monthly expenses on toothpaste and other relevant facts. So, let us collect the data by using a questionnaire. So, you decide that the most important information that you need for your study is 
the average monthly expenditure on toothpaste, the brands of toothpaste that are currently in demand, the attitude of customers towards these brands, customers preferences in regard to the ingredients that are used in these toothpaste, the major media influences on consumers demand for toothpaste and the relation between income and all other factors. So suppose if you get a questionnaire which has been used to collect data for the same purpose then it could be used but by making suitable changes according to your area of study. So example of this questionnaire which can be used for this project report is given as follows. First of all we will ask the name of the person to whom we are interviewing then his or her gender then age of the family members in his or her family. We will also ask the total number of family members then we will ask about the monthly family income then we will also ask them about the location of residence that is they reside in rural areas or urban areas. We can also ask them about the major occupation of the main bread earner. So it might be service, he or she might be a professional, a manufacturer, a trader or may be involved into any other activity which should be specified. Then we can also ask them does your family use toothpaste to clean your teeth because some people also rely on traditional methods. So the options might be yes or no. Then we can ask that if you actually use a toothpaste then according to you what should be the essential qualities of a good toothpaste. You can take more than one option because some people might like the gel based toothpaste, some people might like the toothpaste which has chlorine in it and etc. So it can be a plain toothpaste, it can be a gel based toothpaste, it can be flavored, it might carry protection, it might use fluorine in it or others which can be specified. Then if they actually use a toothpaste they can also specify the brand on which they trust. Then we have how many hundred grams packs of this toothpaste do you use per month? Then are you satisfied with your current toothpaste? The answer might be yes or no. Then are you prepared to try out a new toothpaste? It might be yes or a no. Then if yes they are willing to try a new toothpaste we can ask them that what are the features you would like in the new toothpaste. They can take more than one options. It might be plain, it might be gel, antiseptic, flavored, carries protection, it might carry fluoride or others which can be specified. Then we can also ask them what was the main source of your information about the toothpaste that you are currently using. So it might be an advertisement being played in a cinema hall or it might be an advertisement displayed in an exhibition or internet, a magazine, newspaper, radio, a sales representative must have told about that toothpaste, television or others which might be specified. So now let's analyze and interpret the data which has been obtained. So after collecting the required information we now have to organize and analyze the obtained data. So the final report may be as follows. So we might have surveyed around 100 households, it could also be 500 households, it would depend upon the need of the investigator. Then it might be possible that we might have surveyed 67 percent of urban area and 33 percent of rural areas. That means that the 500 households which were surveyed it included 67 percent from urban areas and 33 percent from rural areas. Now let us show the results obtained through various statistical tools, statistical diagrams and graphs. So you have on your screen first we have the tabular presentation of the age distribution. So we have age in years which is below 10, so there are 74 people who are below 10. Then from the age group 10 to 20 we have 56 people, in the age group 20 to 30 we have 91 households, then from the age group 30 to 40 we had 146 people, then 
from the age group 40 to 50, there were 93 households. Above 50, there were around 40 households. This totals up to 500. So, we have shown this tabular presentation in the form of a bar diagram. So, we have here the bar diagram. So, we see that the most of the people that were surveyed belong to the age group 30 to 40. So, let us study the family size. So, when we surveyed them, we had the family size of the people which had two persons in a family, there were around 20 families, 3 to 4 people were there in 40 families, 5 to 6 people were there in 30 families and there were around more than 6 people in 10 families. So, we surveyed around 100 families. Now, let us represent this information in the form of a bar graph. So, we have this bar graph on your screens which has the number of households on the y axis and the family size on the x axis. So, the most number of families that were surveyed were having around 3 to 4 people in their family. Now, let us discuss their monthly family income status. So, because we surveyed different family income, so we have the data here on your screens that is there were around 20 households which had income from 0 to 10,000. 40 households had income between 10,000 to 20,000. 30 households were there which had income from 20,000 to 30,000. Around 10 households were there which had income between the group 30,000 to 40,000. So, now we will be discussing about the data which has been obtained from this project report. So, we have a sample size that we have obtained data of 100 families. This consisted of 500 people. Now, 67 percent of these households lied in the urban areas and one third of them were in the rural areas. So, majority of users belong to the urban areas because most people in the urban areas use toothpaste. Now, let us conclude the data which has been obtained. So, we have the data on the age distribution of the people. So, we have people who are below 10 years of age 74, then people who are between 10 to 20 there are around 56 people, then between the age group 20 to 30 there are 91 people, between the age group 30 to 40 there are 146 people, between the age group 40 to 50 we have 93 people and above 50 there are 40 people. So, we find that the most number of the people that were surveyed were in the age group 30 to 40. So, we have represented this information in the form of a bar diagram. That is why the bar diagram of the age group 30 to 40 is the highest. So, now let us move ahead and talk about the family size. So, we have surveyed around 100 families. So, these 100 families are of different family size. So, there were around 20 families which had the family size of maximum 2 members. Then, there were 40 families which had a family size of 3 to 4 members. 30 families had a family size of 5 or 6 members and 10 households had a family size of above 6. Now, let us represent this information in the form of a bar diagram. So, we have this bar diagram which shows that the most number of families which were surveyed had a family size of 3 to 4 members. Then, we have the data on monthly family income status. So, we surveyed people which had monthly income of 0 to 10,000 and there were around 20 households as such. Incomes between 10 to 20,000, there were around 40 households. Monthly income of 30 households lied between 20,000 to 30,000 and 10 households had a family income of 30,000 to 40,000. So, let us move ahead and show this in the form of a bar diagram. So, let us move ahead and show this information according to a histogram. So, we have this histogram. So, histograms are basically bar diagrams, but without any gap. So, these are two dimensional diagrams because the length and the width both matters. So, we have this 
histogram in place where we find that the tallest histogram which has 40 families being surveyed belong to 10,000 to 20,000 monthly income group. So, we can find this information from this table as well. So, now let us move ahead and also find the mean and standard deviation of the family income. We are trying to find the mean and uh, standard deviation. So, we have the income class, we have found the midpoints, we also have the frequencies. This will also help us to find the mean of the families. We are also trying to find the standard deviation. So, we have found out FD dash and FD dash square. So, now let us see the observation. So, we observed that the mean income was 18,000 and the standard deviation of the monthly family income was 9000. Similarly, we have monthly family budget on toothpaste. We found that the monthly family expenditure on toothpaste was 104 rupees and it had a standard deviation of 35.60. Now, this is the way the standard deviation on the expenditure on toothpaste was found. So, we have the calculations on your screens. Then let us discuss the major occupational status of the people who were surveyed. So, we have 30 families which were belonging to the service class, 5 families belong to the professional class, 10 families belong to the manufacturing class. 40 families belong to the trading class and any other were 15 families. We have represented this information in the form of a pie diagram. So, which shows that the major people that occupied the pie were actually traders. So, 40 percent of the families were traders because 100 families were surveyed. Now, we have the preferred use of toothpaste. So, the preferred use of toothpaste was found the most with brand P. So, there were around 20 households which were preferring brand P. Now, we have the basis of selection that how do people select a toothpaste. So, there are advertisements. So, 15 members were persuaded by advertisements. Then by the dentist, there were around 5 family members who were persuaded by the dentist. Price attracted 35 households. Similarly, quality attracted 45 members. Taste attracted 20 members. 10 members were actually attracted by the ingredients. There were 50 members who were attracted by the standardized marketing techniques. There were around 50 households which were attracted by the standardized marking on the toothpaste. 10 households preferred it because they tried a new product. Then there were around 35 members who went on the company's brand name. So, we find that the most number of family members were attracted by standardized marking on the product. Then we have taste and preferences. So, we find that the most number of families prefer brand P. So, we have 18 families who are satisfied with brand P. Then there is ingredient preference. So, we find that the most number of people preferred the antiseptic ingredient of the toothpaste. Now, we have media influence. So, what was the influence of media? on the selection of a toothpaste. So, we have different forms of advertisement that is television, newspaper, magazine, cinema, sales representative, exhibit stalls and radio. We find that most number of people were attracted by television advertisements. So, we have shown this data in the form of a bar diagram. So, we find that the bar diagram for television advertisement is the tallest. So, we can observe that majority of the people came to know about the product either through television or through newspaper. Let us discuss the concluding note of the project report. So, we have that 
majority of the users belong to the urban areas and most of them were belonging to the age group between 25 to 50 and had an average of 3 to 6 members in a family. Then the monthly family income of these families ranged between 10,000 to 30,000 and their main occupation was service and trading. Expenditure on toothpaste was 104 rupees per household per month. Brand P, Brand C and Brand C up were the most preferred brands in the households that have been surveyed. People preferred those brands of toothpaste which either had gel or antiseptic. A lot of people get influenced by the advertisement and the most popular form of advertisement was television. So at this point, we come to an end of your statistics for class 11th. Statistics was the science of collection, organization, presentation, analysis and interpretation of data. Under collection of data, we studied that how is data collected, what are the various sources of data collection. Under organization, we studied how can we classify and simplify the collected data. Under presentation, we learned that how can we present data in the form of tables, diagrams and graphs. Under analysis and interpretation, we studied about various tools which can be applied on the collected data to make observations about the data. So, at this point, I take a leave from you and wish you all the best. I will see you again. Till then, bye-bye and take care.